things that we think are a major factor in making this game happen. We have to look, number one, if you're LSU, LSU right now definitely has to basically hit the three. Well, we got to hit the perimeter jumper for LSU, handle the traps. For Kentucky, they have to hit the three, force the turnover, and convert. They have to be able, Kentucky, to knock that three down. If they don't knock it down, they're in trouble. We are set to go. The officials, John Clockerty, David Day, Tom Lose, Clockerty, the referee. And O'Neill easily controls the tap, but Feldhaus will kick it up to Richie Farmer. Farmer's number 32. Woods, they'll move it around, looking for the three. Woods is 11. That's Feldhaus, number 12, in and out, won't go. Loose ball, and Mashburn comes up with it. They don't waste any time getting good ball movement, trying to line up behind that three-point shot. They want to shoot 30 of these a game. Farmer nails it. One of the reasons he's been inserted in the starting lineup to provide the perimeter game. He and Feldhaus normally come off the bench. Pugh is number 20. That's Justin Anderson, a senior transfer from Cal Irvine, who's already graduated from LSU. He'll look for the three. Roger, the wing jump shot's going to be open. Caesar's going to be wide open. So will Anderson. O'Neal, the offensive board. Stick back, won't go, and Woods gets the rebound. Woods is a pretty good rebounder for a small guy. And they're going to say he stepped out of bounds. Sean Woods, a very important part of the Kentucky basketball team. When he plays under control for Rick Pitino, they are really dynamite. He has a tendency to get a little bit out of control. Dick, what's Kentucky going to do defensively against LSU? Well, the collapsing inside with Feldhaus and Mashburn, one in front, one behind. Feldhaus with the rebound, and here comes Kentucky. They lead it 3-0. Oh, unique defense right now. A unique defense. They call it a freak defense, Dick? Well, he's playing a diamond in one. He's going to play man-to-man -man on Peltry, but wide open are the wings. Farmer can't get it. O'Neal the rebound. They'll play a diamond with Shaquille at the back of the diamond, and they'll have Verniel Singleton chase Peltry everywhere he goes. Caesar from the corner for three. That's what I said a little bit earlier, Roger. The wings will be wide open because of the presence of Shaquille in the lane. The perimeter jump shot on the wings will be available. That was Clarence Caesar, a 6'7 freshman from Iowa, Louisiana. Yeah, not Iowa. It's not like Iowa, but it's Iowa. See, there's Shaquille at the back of the diamond. And Singleton is chasing Mashburn. Everywhere he goes, he plays a man-to-man. -man. Farmer, his third three-pointer hits it. Rick Pitino already showing the strategy from the sideline. His first inserts Farmer in a game, and he's already productive. See the double up inside, Fellhouse house in front of him. Purnell Singleton's 24. He'll kick it out to Caesar. Pump fake, left-handed shot, hits it. Wide open again. He is going to become a big player in this game, Roger, because that shot in that wing is there all night because of the presence of Shaquille. Clarence Caesar's got all five points. Farmer's got all six. As Kentucky, you think Kentucky will try to take the air out of the ball a little bit today, Dick? Well, maybe just a little, but that's not their style. Their style is to pressure, to run, to shoot the quick three. Farmer the miss. Good offensive board by Darren Feldhaus. Feldhaus was a member of my all Havlicek team. One of the best six men in all of basketball. Feldhaus has had some big games against LSU in his career at Kentucky. At 27 last year at Kentucky. They were beaten easily here, though, last year by LSU. Shaquille has had two monster games last year against Kentucky. Pelfrey sets air ball. Well, they told you here. I didn't have to tell you. Justin Anderson had the rebound. This is Pew. Averages just over a point a game. He doesn't like to shoot it, but Anderson will. And hit. The wings are open. And if they're knocking down the perimeter shot, we talked about that as one of the keys. What that, that's going to allow Shaquille to get better passing angles inside to Shaquille O'Neal. 8-6. LSU leads it. And Dale Brown's getting ready to send Hanson into the game here. I think Hanson becomes a key player. He has not had a lot of quality minutes this year. But I think now they've made a decision to start to play him a little bit more. The reason he's important, he can shoot the ball as well as handle it. Mismatch out top with Pew on Feldhaus. The Pelfrey inside gets caught by Farmer. And they'll swing it back out around that perimeter. What LSU is doing right now is they're taking Mashburn out of the game by playing a man-to-man. Oh, O'Neal redirected that shot right there by Woods. And look at him run the court. He wants the lob. He thought oh, it missed him. Singleton takes it baseline. The leaner 
The push underneath by Mashburn. There are a couple of big men, but O'Neill at seven feet, 295 pounds. Mashburn's not afraid to shoot the three. One of their better three-point shooters. Well, it's going to be tough for him to get shots today with his defense, with Singleton chasing them all over. That is the sign of respect when they play you in that special defense, Roger. See right here, look at Singleton, 24. He chases Mashburn everywhere he goes. Farmer, blocked by two, and Anderson comes up with it. And look at Shaquille running down the court. They gotta throw the lob. He sure. run, Dickie runs the floor as well as any seven-footer that's ever played the game. I think he is fantastic. I was watching him in practice yesterday. He's got everything a coach dreams of a big man to have. Strength, agility, mobility. Ah, oh, they missed him. Ooh. Tried to get it inside, but you had Mashburn, Pelfrey, and Feldhaus all around him. Not the good pass. You're trying to make the entry to the big post player from the lob. Don't throw a little bounce pass because now you reduce him to 5'11". LSU leads at 8'6". We'll be right back. It's a Big 8 battle when the Missouri Tigers invade Oklahoma or other key conference matchups. It's game one of a regional doubleheader next Sunday on ABC Sports. Roger, watch the diamond defense right now. Look at 24. We've shaded him. Singleton. He is going to chase Mashburn in blue 24. He plays him man-to-man, -man, and the other four people play a diamond with Shaquille O'Neal in the lane so they can keep Shaquille out of foul trouble. It's going to be very difficult for Mashburn, 24, to get a lot of good looks at the basket with his special defense. Dale Brown calls it a freak defense. I said, Dale, cut it out. The only way it's a freak if you play with six and they play with five. <laughs> LSU, a good defensive team, last year led the Southeastern Conference in field goal percentage defense, allowing the opposition just 40% of their shots. This year, they're about 41%, so this is a good defensive team. I think they should even be better. With the presence of Shaquille in the lane, I don't think people should shoot better than 40% against him. Mike Hansen has checked into the game. Number 11, a six-foot junior from Madrid, Spain. Played on the Spanish national team. Good, good basketball player. Had an outstanding year last year. This year, came back and lost his starting job. Singleton locked up Allen Houston against LSU, the Tennessee, Tennessee superstar. He's doing that tonight against Mashburn. Farmer, two of six from three-point land and traveling on Caesar. Now, Hanson can shoot it. He can also dish it for LSU. That's something the that Pew can't do as you look at Dale Brown right there in his third decade of coaching here at LSU. Well, the big win they had was at Alabama, and the reason was the play of Hanson. He had three big threes. He handled the pressure of Whit Sanderson's team down in Tuscaloosa, and I think you're going to start to see him get a lot more minutes. He's got that international experience, too, which gives him a, an edge on a lot of college players. Singleton loves the challenge of chasing. Right now, chasing Mashburn. Battle between Hanson and Farmer, and it's going to be LSU basketball. You mentioned Singleton. He might be the best all-around athlete on this LSU team. Well, he's been a four-year starter, and he's really an improved player. And it was every year he's added a new dimension. One year he's added a little bit range to his jump shot. Another year he added some ball handling skills. He's an outstanding offensive rebounder. His freshman year, he played center here. He's 6'7". He's a senior from Natchez, Mississippi. Hanson for three. Hit! That's why he should play, my friends. That's why he should play. He provides the one ability they need, the perimeter jump shot, so that the defenses could extend and you could jam it inside to Shaquille. In for Kentucky right now is number 31, Dale Brown, a 6'3 junior who was born here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And Coach Dale Brown met player Dale Brown last night for the first time at a restaurant here in town. Yeah, we were at the restaurant. It was great to hear Patino and Brown hook up, watching that psychological warfare with each of them. LSU's on an 8-0 run. They lead it 11-6. Both these clubs really have not gotten any scoring out of their big people because of the special defenses. Bashburn and O'Neill. Hanson to Anderson. Three-point land. And over the top, it's going to be on Caesar. Caesar's a kid with a lot of confidence. He's a diaper dandy, a freshman from Iowa. He's a left-handed player with some really good skills offensively. First foul of the game with 13.07. And this has been a problem, Dick, for Kentucky in several of the last games, as you see Kentucky 2 of 8. And LSU 3 of 4 from three-point land. Well, they're really a pretty good three-point shooting team, LSU. Shooting better than 40%, but they don't take the number that Kentucky takes. Kentucky scores 18 more points by the three-pointer per game than their opposition. Oh, he's going to take it right at Shaquille. Wood blocked by Go away, baby. Get it out of there, Wood. Get it out of there. Shaq 
from Rejection City. Anderson inside, Singleton loses it. Here comes Woods. And the foul is going to be on Anderson. Woods was trying to set up Bellhouse. Shaquille really covers the inside. Look at 33. Pelfrey says no, no way, but I'm going to dump it off. But there's the quickness inside by Shaquille, the excellent timing. 4.6 blocks per game this year for Shaquille O'Neal. He's got to improve himself on a free throw line. He was working on that yesterday. Ready for this? He had a great game against Tennessee, but he was 2 for 13 on the free throw line. Travis Ford has just checked into the game for Kentucky. His Feldhaus is trapped inside. Out to Pelfrey. Ford's a sophomore from Madisonville, Kentucky, transferred from Missouri. Outstanding shooter. He's had problems with injuries. He's had a knee problem. Played at Missouri under Norm Stewart. Mashburn for three. First look that he's had at the basket. Jamal Mashburn from out of New York City has been an outstanding player since the day he put the uniform on. Caesar misses the three. O'Neal, the offensive board. He exposes it, takes it short into the hole and gets it. Friends, you're watching a 7-1, 295 with agility and mobility. And I'm telling you, he can also have a lot of hostility when he takes <laughs> it to the goal. 13-9, LSU leads it by four. He was like a ballerina. He looked like Barishnikov. Feldhaus for three. In and out. Singleton the rebound. Here comes Caesar. He's got Shaquille trailing. He's got Shaquille trailing. He got he fouled by four. Caesar reminds me of Stacy Ogman, who can shoot it. Well, I'll tell you, that's a tremendous compliment. Stacey, Just in their style, the way they move. Stacy was so, so versatile down at UNLV, now playing with the Atlanta Hawks, but he has that look to him. See, right now, there's that drive by Shaquille O'Neal. We're watching a 7-1, 290. Are you serious? That should be illegal. That's because he's the real deal. Roger Twibel, Dick Vitale, back with you at the Deaf Dome in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 13 to 9, LSU. Dick, can you go to the Final Four with a three-point shot? Well, I'll tell you one thing. Rick Pitino did it in 1987 when they made that run with Providence. They went to the Final Four. Billy Donovan, now his assistant coach, shot the three. I think if they get hot, they can create so many problems. Yes, they can. Logically, I don't expect them to because they don't have enough balanced perimeter people and inside people. But certainly it can happen because they're so explosive with that three. That was Dale Brown who got the rebound off the miss by Mike Hansen. Kentucky trails it by four, 13 to nine, just over 11 minutes left to go first half from Baton Rouge. Way outside is Brown, in and out, and O'Neal his sixth rebound. I'll tell you one thing, there's not a better Windex man in America cleaning the glass than Shaq takes it to the rack. Mr. O'Neal, he wants the lob. Timing is so important. Sherman Douglas threw the lob better than anyone in college basketball at Syracuse. Feldhouse on the front, Mashburn behind him. But he wants the lob, throw it to the hand, they can't handle him. Singleton misses. Anderson battling for the rebound. It's off Mashburn. It will be LSU basketball. There's a good look at Jamal Mashburn. He's one of the better Souths in America. I think the three top sophomores in the nation are Grant Hill, Mashburn, and Rodney Rogers at Wake Forest. Another great one is Kendrick Warren at Virginia Commonwealth. Doesn't get any publicity. Anderson for three. Hit! Anderson, a transfer from Cal Irvine. A specialist, a three-point shooter who may go on to pre, pre med play med school. He's already graduated with a degree in psychology, and he wants to be a doctor. Matter of fact, we're going to have him come and talk to you after the game, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> I can use the... <laughs> well, they can't get any shot. Notice how they throw the ball out all the time. Brown misses, tipped outside by Singleton. The lead pass to Steve. Love it, love it. Oh, throw the lob. Throw the lob. Steve's pointing. He wants the lob. Good defensive play by Feldhaus, who ran down the floor that time. As we've got a substitution for LSU is 32. Harold Boudreau will check into the game. He's a 6'9 senior. Richie Former on the floor as well. Yep. Roger, I want to make this point. When you have a 7'1 guy with his agility and his reach, you throw the ball down on his feet, you make him 5'11. Anderson! Justin Anderson with his third three-pointer. And LSU with their biggest lead by 10, 19-9. And they say, we can shoot the three, too. Out of Valley City, North Dakota, transfer from Cal Irvine. Feldhaus. Last North Dakota player to play here with Glenn Hansen, who also played in the NBA, played at LSU. LSU doing a great job defensively. 
four from three-point land. It won't go. Anderson could have gotten Pelfrey over the top, but no call. They have to shoot 40% from the three-point line for them to have a chance to win. Less than 40%. It'll be very difficult to get a W here in Baton Rouge from the perimeter. Hanson to the hole. Mashburn gets the rebound. The officials today, Dick, are letting them play as Caesar gets the steal, but he steps out of bounds right here in front of our broadcast position at Patino. Last Wants year, to talk to Feldhaus and tell him, come on, let's settle this thing down. Last year he had food poisoning and he was in a room with intravenous before he came to this game with 104 temperature and then got blown out and that certainly didn't help his feeling. He is such a fiery competitor. There is no doubt he's one of the great teachers in the game today, Roger. Travis Ford, Pelfrey, Farmer, Feldhaus, and Mashburn, the lineup for Kentucky. See, the three-point shot is really established by throwing the ball inside and then back out. Inside, outside. Farmer from three. Won't go. O'Neal. I mean, Feldhaus had no chance that time as hard as he tried to get the rebound because O'Neal takes up so much space as Brandon now has checked into the game. Jamie Brandon, the sophomore from Chicago. Caesar hits for three. Kentucky's going to have to make some decisions. And one decision is, do we stand inside and pack it on Shaquille, or do we extend and play the wing people? A 19-3 run for LSU. They and, lead it 22-9. And Shaquille doesn't have one basket in the run. Kentucky has gone for over four minutes without scoring. Caesar the steal. Brandon. And he's fouled underneath by Richie Farmer. Jamie Brennan. No, they don't want that sign up there. Bring on Duke. Everybody says bring on Duke. And Grant Hill and company says we'll be there. They come here, by the way, next week. So far, Dick, LSU is showing Kentucky and everyone we can do it without going inside to O'Neal every time. Well, you can't just have the one guy carry it. Everybody else has got to make some contributions. I think right now the key and why this is a different team than I saw earlier is that he's playing the proper combinations, using guys on the perimeter like Hanson and Anderson. Brandon is a 77% free throw shooter, and he is the best three-point field goal shooter on this team. He's had a tough time, Dick, adjusting to the LSU program. Well, he's had a tough time because they played him at the point position. He's really a second guard. He's probably their most talented perimeter player in terms of quickness, athletic ability. He's from out of Martin Luther King High School out in Chicago where he was rated one of the top five players in America. Foul was on Boudreau after the second miss there. Boudreau's a guy that stepped forward against Kentucky on several occasions and had big games. Well, had a big game against Tennessee. Hit big, two big threes last week in the first half. Kentucky knows they can't get anything in the lane. Everything has to come from the perimeter. And the diamond is allowing LSU to get on the wings. Travis Ford hits the three. Boy, that breaks a dry spell of some five minutes. Travis always wanted to wear the Kentucky uniform, but they didn't recruit him, and he went down to Missouri. And then when they were put on probation, he left Missouri and came back home. 22-12, 7.30 to go, first half. Rather low scoring first half so far, but a lot of action as Brandon will take the three off the front of the rim, and Richie Farmer comes up with it. Also, Kentucky likes to get some scores off their defensive ability, forcing the turnover with traps, and we have not seen that here, where they're getting that turnover and that layup. LSU leads Kentucky by 10. We'll be back to Baton Rouge in a moment. LSU leads Kentucky by 10, and folks, you're getting a chance to see today one of the great college centers in the history of the game, but how does it stack up this year? I think it's a year at a big man. I think these five guys have been outstanding. Certainly O'Neal, Alonzo Mourning, who I believe will be the first senior taken in the NBA draft. Christian Leitner, Adam Keefe is really an unknown player. And Oliver Miller can even go up the ladder if he would trim down. I also think as we look at Arkansas, Arkansas pure talent is the best team in the nation. And at the end of the year, they will be the team to beat. In fact, Dale Brown says it's the best team that's ever come in to LSU this year. They blew out. They blew out LSU here, and they also blew out Kentucky at Kentucky. That's one thing Kentucky and LSU have in common. They've lost on their home floor to Arkansas this year. As they tried to flash Mashburn on the baseline, it didn't work. The turnover, and it's LSU basketball. Boudreaux, Hanson, Justin Anderson, Shaquille O'Neal, 
and Clarence Caesar in the game right now for the Tigers of LSU. Dollhouse. Boudreaux won't go, and Mashburn, good position that time against O'Neill. They have not thrown one lob up to Shaquille yet today. Kentucky 4 of 15 from three-point range, LSU 6 of 10. They're not going to win here today shooting 4 for 15. They have to pick this up. Travis Ford won't go, and O'Neill the rebound. Yet another. As O'Neill on the year averaging nearly 14 boards a game, he's got eight already. Throw the lob up to him. Hail Caesar! Caesar says, I like that, Roger. Hail Caesar! That's supposed to be my line. Come on, Roger. You're stealing my you, show. Nick, he's got 11. I tell you, great working with you again. We did it about five, six years ago. Well, it's, it's just fun to come here and watch you before the game. That gets everybody going. That's half the show. I this love is, being with the fans. This is a terrific game. 25-12, LSU leads it with just under six minutes to go. First half from Baton Rouge. You know Kentucky's going to make a spurt and a run. They're just too talented. See the inside, outside. The ball goes inside. And the whistle. What a good job in scouting by Dale Brown and his staff. They really have studied the strengths and weaknesses of LSU, and Dale Brown's team is making sure they're minimizing the number of looks that Pelfrey gets at the basket, Mashburn, they're keeping them away from shooting the basketball. Foul was on Boudreaux, Mashburn from outside, and Justin Anderson, the rebound. And here comes Hanson for LSU. They lead it by 13, Boudreaux from the foul line. Dale Brown, the rebound. Roger, if I were coaching LSU now, I'd call my players on the side and I'd say, fellas, we got a 7-1 superstar, and we got to throw the lob up to him a little bit. We got to get him involved in the game offensively, even though we're getting productivity from the wings. Pelfrey hasn't scored so far in this game. Mashburn has but three. Mashburn, baseline, hits it. Well, the reason they're out of the diamond and one now, they're not playing them head-to-head, -head, so now he should get a few more looks. 25-14, a rare two-pointer. Boudreaux in the lane, O'Neal. Oh, yes! How do you stop it? He says, fellas, if you don't get me the ball, I'll just get it off the rack, and I'll take it to the goal. Are you serious? Just his second hoop. O'Neal with four, 27-14. The three from outside, and Dale Brown knocks it down. He's a very explosive shooter. He's very streaky. Came out of junior college, played at Pascagoula High School in Mississippi. And you ready for this? Shane Matthews played at that high school. Terrell Buckley from Florida State. Matthews from Florida. Hanson Football. hits it. What a spark Hanson's been off the bench. Mike Hanson's got to get more playing time. He needs more PT. He can be valuable to this team. Ford from three-point land. Won't go. Long rebound to Mike Hansen. 29-17. Cross-court. Caesar. He's got that slingshot kind of left-handed shot. LSU's playing a 2-3 matchup now, so Mashburn should get some shots. Saturday, World Championship Boxing is back with the premiere of the Fruit of the Loom Professional Boxing Series. That's coming up next Saturday. We're going to take a pause right now with 3.59. Left to go first half. LSU leads it by 12. Shaquille O'Neal with just four points, but one of them will send the Dunko meter sky high. Dick Laster over 27 points, led the nation, 14 rebounds, third in block shots. Got off to a slow start, and people say, hey, if he stays in college, he's not going to get any better. What do you think about that? Well, I don't really buy that because, first of all, he's facing a multitude of defenses here. He has to work against all kinds of combinations, double teams. He has a big guy to play with him in practice by the name of Hammock, at least to have a seven-footer to play against. Plus the fact, I simply say this, did it hurt Jamar, Walton, Sampson, Ewing, Olajuwon? They all stayed in school. Brandon misses the three-point attempt. 29-17, 3.45 to go. First half from Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Jamel Martinez has checked into the game number 44 for Kentucky. Roger, I think it's great that a young guy has put his priorities in order and saying the money will be there later. There's nothing wrong with trying to be young and to be a kid and to stay in college. And nobody's asking him about that. Are you having any fun here? Are you making some progress? And yeah, he is making progress on his degree. And he made some progress on that, but they're going to call it goaltending. Credit the hoop to Dale Brown. Anytime you try to 
as he lays it up and you try to block the shot directly in the front of the rim, you're definitely going to be called nine out of ten times for goaltending. A lot of full court pressure that time by Kentucky. Martinez doesn't have anywhere near the strength to play him. Ashburn's a very strong player. Martinez, a 6'8 sophomore from Miami, where he was on consecutive state high school championship teams. Believe it or not, he's put on 20 pounds from last year as O'Neill goes up and gets it counted. I mean, that is just pure, unbelievable strength. That is awesome, baby. Magnificent, baby, with a tap of the left. What a great second effort. Are you kidding? Watch this, Roger. The turn of our little jumper. Now they're going to try to box him out. He comes in and attacks the glass, takes it up right at Martinez. Then he says, come on, Mashburn, you try and get me. Foul is on Mashburn, his first, and Shaquille O'Neal struggled at the free throw line, Dick, about 54%, knocks that one down. I'll tell you one thing, you're being very kind. Two for 13 <laughs> well, his last game against Tennessee, but he stayed here all afternoon yesterday working on a free throw line. He's got seven points, ten rebounds, four on the offensive glass, 32-19 with 2.45 to go. Change defenses out of the timeout. They're playing man-to-man, -man, but you see Shaquille's going to let Martinez shoot the ball, basically. But he's not a bad three-point shooter, Martinez. He's not going to chase him all over the floor. Every, everybody on Kentucky shoots the three except for Riddick. There's Martinez, three-point land. And O'Neal! That's a big-time rebound. I mean, that is big-time. That belongs with the Ewings and the Olajuwans when you talk about a big-time rebounder. And amazing, he's only 19 years of age. Kentucky, 5 of 20 on three points. LSU, 7 of 12. Loose ball. Dale Brown picks it up. Three on three with Mashburn on the wing. Between the legs inside. Got it. He's one of the premier power forwards in the nation. You're not going to find many power forwards at 6'9", about 230, with that kind of mobility. A lot of pressure by Kentucky right now. Good Anderson gets it to O'Neal in the middle. Boy, what a weapon it is to have him in the middle. He can handle the ball. Well, as long as he reduces the passing lane by stepping to the basketball. See, a lot of guys wait for the ball to come to them. You must reduce that pass by step, stepping up to it. Anderson double-teamed on the baseline. Singleton down low and hammered by Martinez from behind. LSU's got some really fine athletes other than Shaquille when you're talking about Singleton and Jamie Brandon, Cesar. There's Singleton, number 24, four-year starter, about 6'7 inside. It's knocked to the deck. Against Tennessee and Arkansas, Are you ready for this number? They went to the free throw line against Kentucky 108 times. <laughs> Tennessee went 59 times, and Arkansas 49, and Arkansas knocked down 41. And Singleton makes the first one, 67% free throw shooter. Coming up at halftime, the Foot Locker Slam Fest, first round action. Long jump world record holder Mike Powell and the Eagles linebacker Seth Joyner. You also see Barry Bonds, the Pirates, and volleyballer Adam Johnson. In the first of a series of discussions, Will Chamberlain got a chance to meet with Mike Powell. That's a Slam Fest, Foot Locker Slam Fest. I really feel sorry for Barry Bonds. He only got 4.7 million. Come on, Barry, give me the .7, you keep the 4 million. For Singleton, his first points of the game. Look at that agility and balance. Neil releases oh, Justin West, Anderson. West Unsel outlet. Foul from behind. Did you see the outlet by Shaquille? First of all, he's like a ballerina to keep the ball alive. And then he, with all the grace, he ignites it with the West Unsel. Now look at the ballerina right here. Look at this. He keeps the ball alive. Now he goes up and catches it. And then boom, right out from the chest. Wes Unsel was unreal doing that. The former Louisville All-American. And there's the contact. Foul was on Dale Brown. And Justin Anderson will go to the line for LSU. Anderson, best free throw shooter for the Tigers, 82%. And he knocks that one down. Kentucky gets a host of talent next year. They have the premier recruiting class in America. Rick Pitino and his staff really cleaned up getting Roderick Rhodes from out of New Jersey, one of the top four high school players in the nation. In fact, there's one of the four still available. His name is Othella Harrington from out of Mississippi, Murrah High School. And LSU is one of his final choices with Arkansas and Georgetown in the running. Second foul on Clarence Caesar with 1.19 to go. Dale Brown. He's a motivator. Some people say, Dick, that Dale Brown's the type of coach that will do better with a, the Ricky Blanton team back in 86. Nobody expected him to do anything. 
A lot of pressure on him and Shaquille O'Neal to take it all the way to the to the championship. Well, I would like that pressure. I'd rather have talent and a chance to win than no talent. Bad play by Palfrey. Look at him handle the rock. O'Neal. Look at him handle the rock. The middle. Are you serious? Oh, he, oh, he bricked it. He bricked it. But America, you saw a 7-1 putting the ball to the floor like a little guard. I can't believe it, Roger. I can't believe it. would have exploded 34 21 45 seconds left to go first half feldhaus couple of fakes man o'neill's there kicks it out to the weak side pelfrey on the baseline no Matt Burn. kentucky I, really struggling punch did you see him dribble the length of the court <laughs> he went the length of the court 7-1 29 seconds left to go of tonight. Peter Jennings hosts a special from ABC News. Growing up in the age of eight, your whole family should watch this together starting at 6.30, 5.30 Central. Then it's an all-new edition of America's Funniest Home Videos and Harrison Ford at Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. All tonight here on ABC as Kentucky will take one last shot in the first half. Well, they changed their defense again, Dale Brown. They look right now at Mashburn, and they're playing the diamond and one again with Singleton chasing Mashburn. Came out of the man-to-man. -man. LSU leads it by 13. Pelfrey inside. Scoop won't go. Mashburn. Score the basket. Score the basket. Get it. It'll be goaltending on Shaquille O'Neal. Not a good play right there. Dick, every big man has got a little point guard inside of him, doesn't oh. he? Little HD time, hot dog time. Watch the 7 1. Look at the dribble. Look at him handling the rock. Are you kidding? He's making like the late Pistol Pete who used to play here. Oh, and Travis Ford's just hoping. He's just hoping that he doesn't get clobbered. Wow. 34 23 at halftime. We'll return to ABC's college basketball after this message and a word from our ABC station. Up the loose ball. Look at the low, change of direction. Everybody reach it. We're watching 7-1, 290 pounds. Look at this. Look at Travis Ford. He says, no, Shaquille, no. <laughs> and he bricks it. I'm going to put him on my old Mason team. Now take another look. Shake, rattle, and roll. And his grandma in Jersey City screams, that's my little guy. She called him up about two weeks ago. She says, Sean, his nickname is Sean because his middle name is Rashawn. And he says, Sean, you're awfully meek. I'm watching you on TV. You're not playing strong enough. Dick, 5 of 20 one in the first half and Kentucky this year has not lost many basketball games they're 15 and 4 but when they have lost look at their three-point shooting yeah other than Arkansas and if they don't shoot like that against Arkansas it's a total blowout that game was close up until the 10-minute mark and then Arkansas broke it open but look at the three games where they shot horrendous and lost and look at some key wins Indiana they shoot 47.8 West Virginia the NIT the Louisville game Notre Dame game when they're shooting the three they are effective I personally think has really had this team overachieve all year long because they're limited along the baseline. And I definitely think they've been overrated in the ratings to be a top 10 team in the nation. Hugh back in to start the second half. Caesar outside. Won't go in Sean Woods, the rebound. So it's Farmer and Woods, Mashburn, Pelfrey, who was shut out in the first half, and Feldhaus for Kentucky. They have to find some shots for Pelfrey. Feldhaus misses. Loose ball. Anderson with the save. And it will be Kentucky basketball. You mentioned uh, Shaquille's grandmother, Jersey. Let's say hi to John Vital, St. Mary's Hospital, Passaic, New Jersey. I know your dad's been ill this weekend. We hope he has a speedy recovery, Dick. Well, thanks a lot, uh, Raj. I know that uh, he'd rather be at the game. Dad, hope everything works out. 34-23. Just underway. Second half from Baton Rouge. Inside, and look at Mashburn took it up against O'Neal. Peter Goodett, the assistant coach at Duke, sitting behind me. We were talking at halftime, and he said, you have to bring the ball at Shaquille a little bit more. And I know for a fact that Duke, when they come here, you better believe they will attack inside. But they got personnel that can attack. The lob to Shaquille O'Neal um, from T.J. Pugh. About time, throwing the ball up to Mr. O'Neal. That's unstoppable. Back in the diamond again in one with Singleton playing Mashburn. 
36, 25, Pelfrey, he's hesitating on that shot. He's getting it, he's open, and he's hesitating as Kentucky turns the ball over. What they're doing is they're quickly recognizing that Pelfrey's an outstanding shooter and they're matching up on him. Here's T.J. Pugh. I've been screaming about that the entire game, Roger. That shot is available because of his agility. While we're in the replay, the turnover by LSU Pelfrey for the three. Kentucky just can't get that three-pointer down. And they only get one shot at the basket. LSU, remember, had that 19-3 run in the first half to bust this thing open. And they have the 11-point lead. Caesar misses off the front of the rim. Very streaky shooter. He's a streaky shooter. In the middle to Mashburn. Feldhaus comes up with it. And the foul underneath is going to be on Singleton. While we've got a moment, let's uh, bring you some scores of some other games. UCLA ranked second easily over Louisville in Louisville today. Louisville's really been a disappointment. Look at Ohio State. Good win going down to Michigan. Jimmy Jackson and company, that's a real big win. Michigan had just beaten Ooh, right Iowa here. by Iowa one by over one. Purdue. Hey, that was a big win. I'll tell you why. And at halftime, Oklahoma State leads Missouri. That game in Stillwater. Well, they don't lose there. They've been undefeated. Look at Arizona, 17-plus. Eddie Sutton hasn't lost a game at home in two years as the coach up in Stillwater. The big win by Ohio State. Michigan had just beaten Michigan State up at Michigan State. They were down like 14, came from behind, beat Judd Heathcote's team, and then Judd's team comes back last night and blows out, blows out Indiana. Feldhaus, an 80% free throw shooter, gets his first two. <laughs> Try to get to the trap. He's going to invite him into a trapping area. Here's the trap when you spin. And they get it from behind. Farmer tipped it from behind. Pelfrey behind the back and the easy two. And that's what Kentucky does. They're not the quickest people in the world. They get you from behind a lot. Well, they recover really well. They chart that as well. They call that deflections. He learned that under UB Brown when Rick Pitino was an assistant under UB with the New York Knicks. Chart deflections. First two points for Pelfrey. This now, 36-29, seven-point the game, another again. turnover. There's the deflection again. Dale Brown needs a timeout if they score right here. If they score and knock this down, you better get a T.O. Dale. Mashburn misses the three. Feldhaus the long rebound. And Kentucky will go to Pelfrey in the corner. And they're going to set things up to Richie Farmer. Wide open. Three point. Feldhaus the rebound again. They're out hustling LSU right now. When you're getting that many opportunities. Two great plays right there by Farmer and Feldhaus. Offensive rebound. Rebounding. The key is that you're playing aggressive basketball. Blocked by O'Neal. What great Q timing. In the trail. Trail. You got the trail man. And Pelfrey from behind knocks it away, but it's off Farmer, and it'll be LSU basketball. It's important to communicate in transition to let the know, guy know you're trailing. Now watch Pelfrey right here with the behind-the-back dribble. See, he's going to go around his back, and that's set up. That wasn't to be a hot dog. That was an effective behind-the-back dribble to get away from the defensive player. Kentucky's outscored LSU 6-2 to start the second half as they go to Shaquille O'Neal. He's added the jump hook, and the reason he's added it, he worked one-on-one -on -one with the big redhead, Bill Walton, who worked with him on that jump hook, and look at that intensity. I'd love to play for him because the guy has his heart and soul in everything he does. Walton has visited here. Abdul Jabbar, Julius Irving. They've all come to visit this young fellow, Shaquille O'Neal, and stress the, the importance of his education and what he wants to do with his life. Woods kicks it out to Farmer. Tipped there by Jamie Brandon, who's checked into the game. And over and back. Saturday, World Championship Boxing is back with the premiere of the Fruit of the Loom Professional Boxing Series. Three weeks of world title bouts begin with the fighter of the year, undefeated James Tony, considered the king of the middleweights, who put his crown and his reputation in the line against challenger Dave Tiberi. That's live. Coverage begins at 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central, right here on ABC. Jamie Brandon playing the point. Outstanding athlete, but he's really a slasher and a driver. O'Neal with three men on him. Can he kick it back out? Does he take it in? He has really taken his game to a new level from when I saw him earlier this year. And last year, he was dominant here against Arizona. There's some words being exchanged. John Clark, he's an outstanding official, had the final game in Seattle in a national championship between Seton Hall and between Michigan back in 1989. 
Travis Ford in the game for Kentucky. We mentioned Brandon has checked in. Let's break down his technique right here on the free throw line. I personally think I was talking to him yesterday that he gets too much palm on the basketball. He has the big, big hand, and the ball slides into his palm, and that's why he doesn't get the good rotation. Dick, he's shooting 54%. He's been to the line 130 times so far this year. Chris Weber also struggles on a free throw line for Michigan. See, that's Brick City, and the reason for that, the ball slides deep into the palm of his hand. You have to get fingertip control to get that good backspin and rotation. 38, 29, just over 16 minutes ago, another three-pointer miss. He should take lessons from you about free throw shooting. What'd you hit, about eight in a row before the game out here tonight? I had this place going crazy. Didn't I? <laughs> they, loved, they were cheering me on. That's what gave me the impetus. I loved having the crowd. The hot dog in me came out. Oh, Dick, you got so much mustard on you. I'm going to call you Heinz or something. <laughs> There's that diamond again, playing that diamond defense. What I simply mean is to play the four-man zone. There's Brandon with the good, quick hands. Brandon the steal from behind. Brandon with over 20 steals on the year. Baseline to Singleton in there. Singleton with a good power move along the baseline. His first basket, three points for Vernell Singleton. And it's 40-29, back to an 11-point lead. That's where we were at halftime with 15.30 to go. Another turnover, still loose. Mashburn finally comes away with it. Kentucky, because of the presence of the three-point shot, can get back in the game quickly. They've been a little bit cold right here, starting the second half from three. Feldhaus bounces it off his knee. Just the mere presence of Shaquille O'Neal behind him changes everything. They'll have a big guy next year to help him by the name of Rodney Dent, a junior college guy at Kentucky. Roderick Rhodes will help him on the inside, but they're not there today. You'd rather walk than drive an American car. Roger Tribal, Dick Bites Al, back with you. Shaquille O'Neal, 11 points. Uh, he's got 14 rebounds. And Dick, you mentioned at the top, he's planning on staying for his senior year. That's what you understand. And here's some other guys who've stayed for four. Yeah, here's five guys. They decided they wanted to enjoy their collegiate days and stay on a college campus. And I don't see anything wrong with it. Everybody's saying, how could he turn now? Possibly 25, 30 million over five years. He's insured right now for 2.7 million by Lloyds of London. And that was made possible through the NCAA. He has to pay back the rate on that once he becomes a pro. A good entry to Singleton. Singleton, who didn't score a basket in the first half, now has five points. And they came out with a pressure on the defensive end, 2-2-1, the UCLA old pressure. The reason he scored there and wide open is because of the presence of Shaquille. 13 point lead for LSU matches their biggest of the game. Kentucky 0 for 5 from 3 point land in the second half. Now Dale Brown changes defense as he's playing the 2 ah! Caesar put it right back in Feldhouse's face. Well, speaking of Kaywood Ledford, the voice of Kentucky basketball for so many years, going out after 39 years, can't leave at 39. You got to at least leave at 40. He's got to stay another year. But Rick Pitino has said that as well. But basically, he said this is the most talented team in the SEC. He really feels LSU. Mashburn spinning to the hoop. Caesar takes it away, and the lefty will pull up and give it to Jamie Brandon inside to O'Neal, tipped away by Feldhaus. Off Shaquille, and it'll be Kentucky basketball. Next Sunday, Domino's Pizza College Basketball returns with another doubleheader. In game one, most of you will see Missouri take on Big 8 rival Oklahoma, plus regional coverage of Mississippi State at Georgia or Penn State at Temple as Pelfrey hits the three. Followed up by Georgia Tech at Maryland, DePaul at Marquette, Texas at Houston, or Arizona at Cal. That's next Sunday here on ABC. Jimmy Brandon, the last possession, missed the lob pass right up again to Shaquille O'Neal. They've thrown one lob, and it's been effective. Belfry, who didn't score in the first half, now with five. And it's 42-32. Even though it seems like LSU should have a bigger lead, that three-point shot just keeps you so much closer. O'Neal travels. Lifted his pivot foot. Good ball by David Day. Would you like to see him, when he gets it in, to kick it back out quicker, make a quicker decision? To... Yeah, if you throw it back out, then get it back in, mm -hmm. because the defense has a tendency to relax once you release the ball. But a lot of guys, when they throw it back out, they stand and watch. Throw it back out and then flash back and get it. 13-30. Left to go in this game from Baton Rouge. Richie Farmer. Feldhaus from three-point land just can't get it down, and Clarence Caesar 
from Iowa, Louisiana, with a rebound. He brings it down the floor, pulls up for the pop, and in. He doesn't, Tuner's touch. He doesn't play like a freshman. I'm no. not talking about ability-wise. I'm talking about cockiness and confidence. He's got 13 as Feldhaus kicks it back out. Perimeter basketball. Inside, outside. Woods, three, won't go. Mashburn, strong move back to the hoop. He's such a big-time player. When you talk about all the great young players, you have to include his name with all the outstanding young people. Anderson finally gets it up court. Brunel Singleton, 44-34. LSU leads it by 10. What excitement Dale Brown has brought to this place. There's a good the pass to Brandon right there. And the foul. That time, there was no hesitation. He kicked it out to the top. Yeah, but see, as soon as he threw the ball back out, he should have immediately flashed right to the basket, Shaquille. Mashburn this working on the inside. Look at a good offensive rebound in position. But Shaquille's going to be nice here. See, Shaquille goes up, but he goes up very lightheartedly. Mashburn's dad was a professional boxer. Foul was on Sean Woods, and they're going to clean up some moisture out there. Mashburn, obviously the most talented of these Kentucky players. As Dick mentioned, four recruits coming in next year. None from the state of Kentucky. They lose three Kentucky kids, uh, Dick, with this class, and that just leaves them two on the team for next year. Well, Rick Pitino wants to have Kentucky kids in their uniform, but they have to be able to play at this level. This year was a down year for players in Kentucky. Oh, should have taken it up stronger, Shaquille. No, no basket. Good call. In the NBA, that would have counted. In the NBA, there's a continuation play, but no continuation play is permitted on a collegiate level. Third foul on Jamal Mashburn from out of San Antonio. Robert Cole High School. That's where he started to dominate. He bricked that one. See, right there, that would have counted on a professional level. Telecast today is being produced in association with Raycon Sports. 44-34. LSU leads it by 10, 12-18 to go. From I've me. often said, Roger, the easiest player to guard is a guy that doesn't move. Anderson kicks it back outside to Brandon. Up top. What's Brandon. Kentucky doing? Anything different defensively this half, Dick? They're still basically playing the same, trying to pack it inside. Feldhaus the rebound. See if Kentucky can cut it underneath 10. Feldhaus will just keep pitching it. Finally hits it. That's why they're always in the game, as you said a little bit earlier, Roger. That three is so big, and it's such a weapon. His first three-pointer, he's one of six. And it's 44-37. And he's a much better shooter. Coming off the bench, he's been so productive all year. Caesar and the whistle out top. You know, last year they had such an unbelievable year. 22-6. and six. We had breakfast this morning with Dick Weiss, who's here covering the game, and is spending a year with Rick Pitino, writing a book about Pitino, and a year with the Cats. And he said last year, the guys that are seniors right now had unbelievable years. They really played to their best. Talking Fellhouse and Farmer and Pelfrey and all their people. And they really created all the expectations that existed for this year's team. But reality is set in against some good athletic teams. They're they were a little bit limited, Kentucky. They're one-dimensional, perimeter-oriented. There's a look at Clarence Caesar, 6'7", freshman. We mentioned from Iowa, Louisiana. How many people came up to tell us it's Iowa, not Iowa? I play, he played on a Boston shootout championship team from out of Louisiana. And on that team is a young man, or was, by the name of Randy Livingston, who's present here today, from Isidore Newman High School in New Orleans, the best point guard in America as a junior. Everybody wants him, and his brother goes to LSU, so watch out, you coaches. We'll return to ABC's College Basketball after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Well, Kentucky trails LSU by nine, even though they've only hit seven of 31 three-point shots in this game, Dick. Wow, Dale, Dale Brown, what a career he's had. Eight times in a row to the NCAA tournament, two Final Fours, 81 and 86. Had that 86 miracle run out of Minot, North Dakota. Controversial, but I'll tell you something. He loves this place, loves his kids, and he loves his little grandson. I mean, there's the little grandson in purple. That's his daughter, Robin, and next to Robin is his wife, Avani. I spent time with him yesterday at his house, and he didn't want to talk basketball. All he was doing was playing with his little grandson, Christopher. People don't see the other sides of coaches, and I'll tell you something, it's not an easy job with all the stress and pressure. Mashburn throws it up, 
won't go. Martinez has checked in for Kentucky. I was talking to Joe Dean, the athletic director at LSU, before the game. There are about 10 scouts here. I said, where are they sitting? He goes, hey, I make them buy tickets. If they're going to come in here and take my players away, they're going to pay for the tickets. As John Williamson, Maurice Williamson, has checked into the game, the son of uh, Super John Williamson, former great for the New Jersey Nets. Uh, this young man with a lot of playing time two years ago, academically ineligible a year ago. There's the release. He makes like a... And then and there's the great pass. I mean, that was ripping to Clark. I mean, that looked like an unbelievable play right there. Maurice Williams did. His dad really struggling physically. He's got a kidney problem. Great guy, Super John. Played for, as you mentioned, the Nets. They retired his jersey. In fact, number 23, it's hanging over there in the Nets arena, along with Dr. J's jersey. So Williamson gets one of two. And forget about anybody thinking Rick Pitino's leaving Kentucky, going to the Nets or anywhere. He loves it there. He loves his class coming in. And he says, I'm not going to break my contract. And you know what? I believe him. He has five years left on that contract. Ten-point lead for LSU. That's Travis Ford from outside. The three-one. Oh, that's Paula Shaquille. That's Shaquille. No, they've got Martinez. Oh, they got, got Martinez he had first? underneath. I thought he was holding him with the left hand, but you go, Roger, I'm blind in my left eye, so I really can't see to the left. Well, let's take a look. Let's, let's watch. Watch Shaquille right now on the rebound. Let's see if he tries to get away with one. He got good inside position. I no, don't know. No, no, no. The right arm of Martinez was up there first, and Shaquille just pushed him away. Okay, I'll give you the benefit. You give it to me? Yeah, you're bigger than me. I mean, so, I'm not going to fight you. Ooh, I don't know about that left arm, Roger. I don't know about that left arm. Well, Dale Brown says they give him a lot of ticky-tacky fouls, you know, as Brandon loses it, and Williamson picks it up. Williamson's an athlete with great scoring ability, very streaky. Singleton, boy, he was in trouble, but he got it to Shaquille, who leans in. And they count it. That was an amazing play right there. It's tough to describe what he did, except all I can simply say, there are many big guys in the NBA that can make the play he just made in this lane. To have that kind of quickness and ability, strength, power. Third foul on Richie Farmer of Kentucky. I'm just and amazed with his agility, Roger. There's that line drive, and he misses another one. He really has to get in his gym and have people really break down and work on that free throw line because he can't continually shoot like that. Mashburn for three. So Mashburn now a with month. 16 points, and it's 49-40. The monster mash. Williamson all the way, won't go. O'Neal, the offensive board. That's a brick right there from about five feet. Yeah, he's got to kick that off the glass, try to get it up on a square. Just over 10 minutes to go. They're not going to go away, Kentucky. No. They're not going to go away. They're due to get a little streak on with this three-point shot. Mashburn in and out. Ford gets it in the lane, and the foul is going to be called on Williamson. Travis Ford left, left Missouri. Missouri, to me, is one of the real surprises this year, along with Syracuse, the job they've done up there, Jimmy Beheim and company. Some of the disappointments. Look at St. John's blowing out yesterday. I mean, blowing out Connecticut. That even shows you more why it's been a real disappointment with them losing five games and struggling in the past few weeks. Feldhaus for three. He's one of seven from three-point land. The save. They can't keep it alive, and here comes Brandon. Sean right. Woods has checked back into the game for Kentucky. Brandon's high school team was number one in the nation at King High School when he played. There it is. Oh. There it is. That move is unstoppable. Spinning in the lane, the little jump hook in the lane. 15 points for Shaquille O'Neal. His season average just under 25. 51-40, 11-point lead. Less than nine and a half to go here from Baton Rouge. It's his presence, Roger, that means so much. The intimidation factor. Can't put a number on it. As Kentucky constantly looking for the perimeter three. They find Mashburn all alone underneath. Good play there. That's what you got to do. Establish a little inside scoring. Mashburn with the reverse layup. There's the trap. Now they're going to post up Shaquille. You want to look diagonal. And good job there. Offensive foul. Yes, He's it just... was on Brandon. Brandon is just not comfortable with the ball in the backcourt. You have to move the basketball against the trap. There's Mashburn along the baseline. Nobody plays him. Matador defense right there. He just waves at him. Now here's Brandon's going to over dribble against the traps. Mashburn steps in, takes the charge. 
Nine point lead for LSU. And Travis Ford throws it away. Where I, where I disagree with Dale is, and we talked about it yesterday, I feel that Mike Hansen's got to get more playing time. I think he provides an element to this team that's really needed. Well, he gave him a real spark, and he points down the bench. He's going to go to T.J. Pugh and get him back in there because really having a tough time handling the basketball right now. Brandon all the way to the hole, but that's what Jamie Brandon can do for him. That's exactly what he is, a slashing, driving player, and that's why he's much more effective if he'd be on the wing. And the foul's going to be on O'Neal. He's got great skills. I mean, they make no doubt about it. Jamie Brandon's going to be a heck of a player here at LSU. He possesses things that you can't teach, Roger. His explosiveness. First foul on uh, Shaquille O'Neal, who's fouled out of three games this year. And there are the three-point attempts. Season high, 36. Today, they've got 35, but they haven't been knocking down the three-pointers. Eight of 35, Dick. I think the three-point shot has become too dominant in college basketball. I really believe it would be much more effective if they moved it back a little bit, Roger, and went to the international rule of 20 feet, 6 inches. It's just affecting too many games. Pelfrey makes the free throw. This has been a quiet day for John Pelfrey. Over 13 points and four rebounds in contest. I'll tell you one thing about Kentucky, though. When they walked into that restaurant last night and when they walked out and the crowd gave them a hand, the people down at Rupp Arena also really know their basketball and they really appreciate good basketball from also the visiting team. That's always a classy place to visit down at Rupp Arena. Pelfrey with the miss off Kentucky and it'll be LSU ball with 8.29 to go. Tigers lead it by 10. Dale Brown, second most wins in SEC history behind the legendary Adolph Rupp. And he also has more wins against Kentucky than anyone. 17. 17. Right. I won't tell you about the 25 losses. I no. promised I would mention that. And Pugh and Williamson now in the backcourt. Dick not able to hook up. We've got Boudreaux in there along with Shaquille O'Neal and Caesar. See, I think that Dale gets himself caught into a little situation because the depth of this team that he wants to keep people happy. So you put people on the floor to try to get the minutes, and it breaks up rhythm. It breaks up cohesiveness. Mashburn in there along with Martinez blocked by O'Neal. Williamson fouled by Pelfrey. That was a phenomenal block right there because Mashburn did everything in his power to protect the basketball and seal off the defensive player when he tried to make the reverse layup. Timing so essential to a great shot blocker. And this guy developed one of the greats. He was instrumental in the development of Patrick Ewing. Ewing became a much more dominant offensive player under his tutelage. But Dick, with the three-point shot, you got to live and die with it. I mean, they're committed to it. And you don't have much else to go to when they're not falling. Well, he's trying to take advantage of the strengths of his team. I think it's essential for a coach when you break down your team we to find out the strengths. Excuse me, we want to correct the score. Purdue and Wisconsin play today, not Iowa. And Wisconsin gets the win over Purdue. You know, I was really... Uh, wondering about that score because i will won last night they beat minnesota i was been a real disappointment but they're starting to get it heated up and i think they're going to come on i think the hawkeyes are too talented and they're going to start coming on in the big 10. maurice williams knocks them both down timeout on the floor eight minutes left to go lsu leads by 12. we've added roger tribal dick vitale with you in baton rouge the shack pack and they are here. Well, what do they say there, Dick? I can't read you that can't. small print. Are you kidding me? I see my name in it. What do you got my name in there? What does it say? Better, Better chance, chance of nailing Dick Vitale in the head. Oh, that's why they were throwing newspapers at oh. it. Look, the shot back. What is this? Uh, it's unbelievable. Awesome. December 8th. Hey, I should charge them for using my name on that shirt, Roger. Come on, help me out. Be hey. my marketing uh, uh, agent. You got too many agents as it is, Dick. <laughs> hey, Less than eight minutes to go. 55-43, Woods with the shot, won't go. Tipped outside, and Feldhaus gets it. Kentucky, 8 for 35 from three-point land. 8 for 35, 23%. Feldhaus got the start today because he's been terrific the last couple of years as Pelfrey takes it in and hits it. Feldhaus has averaged nearly 20 points and 8 rebounds in the last four games. He hasn't done much at all today, though. Shaquille is really playing a little bit soft defensively in the lane, allowing him to take the ball to the basket. This game is not out of distance, being 10 down. And Shaquille loses it. Humphrey's looking Woods. for the three. Humphrey was looking for the three. They should have brought it to this wing. 
Justin Anderson with the steal on the baseline. The reason Fellhouse did not step to the ball, to reduce the distance of the pass by stepping to the ball. Oh, Shaquille was wide open. Well, Pew, Pew couldn't find him inside. It's hard to miss with his 7'2", 95. He wants the ball on top, but he insists on trying to throw the little bounce pass to make him 5'11". Pelfrey with the kick, so it'll be LSU basketball. Singleton's in there with Caesar. Oh, can you take it inside on the big man? Well, see, right now, he's not going to guard. He doesn't want to get a foul. Now, look at this. Pelfrey takes it right at him, and he says, go ahead, John. I'll let you just shoot it. Well, he's only got one foul. I know. That's why he's got to play a little bit more tougher on a defensive end. 6.45 to go. Ten-point lead for LSU. Are they chewing a little clock there? Kind oh, they're running it down a bit. Trying to take Four men time. around him, and they line up Singleton inside, and they're going to call the foul on Telford. Good play that time. Well, you know, you're talking about using some clock, Roger. I really believe that's what makes Arkansas sensational. If you have to play Arkansas in the last five minutes, and they came here and they did it, Dale Brown said it was the best team that's ever come to Assembly Hall. They just take you apart. They spread the court, and they use Mayberry and Todd Day, and they just blitz you one-on-one, -on -one, and then they shoot 75% on the free throw line. Singleton, a 67% free throw shooter, and O'Neal's not the only guy that's had problems on the line today. They're shooting about 50% today as you take a look at the LSU bench. So, Vernell Singleton averaging nearly 14 points per game, but so far today with just seven. But he's a solid defensive player. There's Dale Brown coaching, talking to Williamson. Hansen has checked back into the game now with 6.30 to go. Well, winning time. you got to put your best combinations on the floor. Feldhouse taking it inside on O'Neal, and Shaquille got a piece of it. Kentucky's got a date with Auburn coming up. I'll tell you something. Auburn yesterday gets 43 out of Ronnie Battle, and they're a very dangerous basketball team. They beat Alabama. Williamson has come back in, and Anderson will sit down for LSU. Woods takes it inside. O'Neal gets it. No chance. Woods had no chance right there. Hanson. And they'll pull it back outside. And the whistle underneath, away from the basketball. They're going to get Pelfrey for his fourth foul. Pelfrey, a fifth-year player, came here under the, tutor, under the regime of Eddie Sutton, who's doing an amazing job with Oklahoma State. Dave Day talking to him right now, saying, just play some basketball, redhead. Been a tough day for John Pelfrey. Picked it up a little bit here in the second half. You know, 1986, we talked about the miracle win. That was one of the great matchups for LSU, and they beat Kentucky out in the Omni 59-57 after losing three consecutive times. That's like a line drive. Not a good-looking shot right there by O'Neal. They were the number nine seed in 86. They beat the eighth seed, Purdue, the second seed, Memphis State, the third, Georgia Tech, and, and number, number one. one, Kentucky. And that was for the right to go to huh? the Final Four. It was with John Williams, who's now become really a non-factor in the NBA. Hey, Shaquille shot those last two straight downhill. He got up on his tiptoes as good hammock. will check into the game right now. He's another seven-footer, a junior from the Netherlands. O'Neal, a prime time performer. You better believe he's a PT peer. And the catch something. Steal here. Uh oh, here we go. Caesar. Oh, Hail no. Caesar. The elevator man, as Roger says, Hail Caesar. And the biggest lead for LSU at 16 points. And Kentucky wants a timeout. And Mr. Patino says a timeout, baby. 52 left to go from Baton Rouge. Wouldn't it be and welcome back. Roger Twible, Dick Vitale with you. LSU with their biggest lead, 61-45. And 552 left to go in this game. Coming up tonight at 6.30 Eastern, Peter. And during the timeout, we want Duke. We want Duke. They better watch out going to Florida down there in Gainesville. They got a date in the SEC before they have a date with Duke back at home here in a game that's great for television, but really the Florida game is more important. Dick, we're going to see Kentucky, if they make the hoop, then start making the immediate foul here, don't you think? Yeah, they really love to foul to stop the clock. Loose ball after the miss by Brown, and Pelfrey will bring it back outside. Foul is going to be on Caesar. We don't want to foul Travis Ford. He's a tremendous free throw shooter. 
They're not in the bonus no. though. Byron Caesar's third foul, but what a good game he's had. He gave him such a lift out of the gate, shooting that three and knocking it down. There he is, going right to the goal. You like him, you call him Stacy Ogman. He gives, getting... you, gives you that look. He's a little bit better shooter than Stacy was. When he's probably not as good a defensive player as Stacy. When do you see this kid, Mark Hutton? He's probably the best kid that's not playing on a collegiate level now in junior college, according to Rick Pitino and Roy Williams. He's going to Auburn. They call him a left-handed. Stacy Ogman, who can shoot the ball. Farmer the miss. And Caesar to Hanson, three on two, but he'll pull it back. Smart play. Yeah. Hutton's in junior college over at Barton Junior College. Here's Hanson playing at the end of the game to provide some experience and leadership ability. Couple international players, Hammock from the Netherlands, Hanson from Spain, and he knocks it down. Dale Brown, hear me loud and clear. Mr. Hanson needs PT. Shaquille getting a little rest. 63-45, biggest lead for the Tigers of LSU with 4.25 left to go. Ford wide open from three-point land. They just can't get it down. Martinez inside for two. Good look by Travis Ford. Shows his basketball instincts. Anticipates exceptionally well. Here's Rick Pitino using the clock. He'll do everything imaginable. He's so well prepared for every situation. Kentucky with the timeout. 4-16 left to go. 63-47. Want to remind you next Sunday, Domino's Pizza College basketball returns with another doubleheader. In game one, most of you will see Missouri take on Big A rival Oklahoma plus regional coverage of Mississippi at Georgia or Penn State at Temple. That's followed by Georgia Tech in Maryland, DePaul at Marquette, Texas at Houston, or Arizona at Cal. It's regional action next Sunday right here on ABC. Georgia Tech was beaten today by North Carolina. North Carolina has a big date on Wednesday. You can't believe that Duke's thinking about LSU. They have a date with a school called North Carolina on Wednesday. Duke and Carolina. In fact, Carolina is the last team to beat Duke. They beat them in the ACC championship. Dick working here today for Mutual Radio, doing some color commentary. Talk about great shooters. Kyle Macy, Phoenix Suns, of course, University of Kentucky. This is the first time Kyle Macy has been back to this building since he hit a game-winning shot in 1980 to get Kentucky the Southeastern Conference title. Yeah, he beat uh, LSU at that jump shot. Kyle, a tremendous shooter, one of the greats ever to play for Kentucky. Now you talk about Dale Brown. In fact, the SEC, the last team to get into the Final Four was 1986. Was his team that really overachieved with Ricky Blanton. And he was telling us yesterday he'd love Ricky Blanton. Blanton's playing over in Europe. Uh, I want to remind you this telecast is being produced in association with Raycom Sports. A long pass to O'Neal and Mashburn with the foul. He's making like a wide receiver. Big tight end there, Dick. What a tight end. Keith <laughs> Jackson move over, Big Keith. I mean, this guy is a tight end. Are you kidding me? Well, the foul was on Jamal Mashburn, and I've got him for four. As Richie Farmer will check in, Sean Woods will come out right now. And Shaquille, let's see if he works on that free throw touch, Dick. Mm, shooters bounce, shooters bounce. He's just not getting enough arc to the shot, and he's not getting that soft touch because he's not getting the good rotation with fingertips. He's got to flex those knees as well. 18 points, 17 rebounds, four block shots. Not bad numbers, and what about his presence inside, what he's done all day? That's what you don't track, what he's redirecting offensively. That was like an right there, throwing the ball back out. Caesar, here goes Caesar, Yasser Jamsini, hello, the elevator man. 66-47, less than four minutes to go. He's no, three for three. He's such an active player, Caesar. <laughs> Masper just says, I gotta get it out of here, man. I can't stay inside. Travis Ford can't get the three to go, and it's going to be LSU basketball, and folks, they've got a 19-point lead. Years ago, they had a player here by the name of Leonard Mitchell. Leonard Mitchell, this kid is reminiscent of Mitchell, except Mitchell was a right-handed player, the way he runs the floor. Feldhaus forces the turnover on the inbounds pass. These are such an active player. There's hands in a passing lane. Now he sprints to the basketball. There's the quickness. Look at Hanson trying to lead the way. Got to do some blocking for him. Got a timeout on the floor with 3.42 left to go, and we'll keep it right here at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 66-47. Well, you know, LSU's in really a battle recruiting right now. I said a little bit earlier, 
Roderick Rhodes, one of the high school great players, along with Corliss Williamson. Williamson's going to Arkansas. Rhodes is going to Kentucky. Othella Harrington and Jason Kidd is going to California. Othella Harrington is the only one that's available, and it looks like it'll be LSU, Georgetown, or Arkansas. My feeling is, I think he'll come to LSU. He's at Mora High School in Mississippi, where their coach down there won his 700th game by the coach, Mr. Jordan. Congratulations to Coach Jordan. Dick, just one footnote on the recruiting situation at LSU. It, it really hurt them, the uh, gubernatorial election here in Louisiana when David Duke was, was running, and that caused them some problems. And right now, LSU has not signed anyone, but they feel they're close to Othella Harrington, and if they can get him and Shaquille stays, they got something. Well, they've had a, luck, a lot of luck in the state of Mississippi. They had a little guy here several years ago, we all know, by the name of Chris Jackson, who came from Mississippi. And Dale Brown has a program right now that's creating a lot of excitement so it'll be really interesting to see what happens to Othella in making his decision but I know one thing the SEC is smiling getting Roderick Rhodes and Corliss Williamson wait till you see Williamson down in Arkansas next year Nolan Richardson you got so much talent I want to remind you folks, tonight, Peter Jennings will host a special from ABC News. It's growing up in the age of age. Your whole family should watch this together starting at 6.30, 5.30 Central. Then it's an all-new edition of America's Funniest Home Videos, followed by Harrison Ford and Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. That's all tonight here on ABC and another steal by Caesar. He really plays the passing lane well. And the foul's going to be on Richie Farmer. I don't know, maybe it's me, Roger, as this game is getting away in my feelings about the Arkansas team. But they're getting such solid play now out of Lee Mayberry. And also, Nolan has done a tremendous job blending those people, especially after getting them late like he did get Todd Day. Well, Dick, I'll, I'll go back and echo something. And we were talking to Rick Pitino this morning about that Arkansas team as Caesar nails the first one. Lee Mayberry, in my opinion, is the best point guard in the country. And he really makes, you can talk about Todd Day and Oliver Miller, but in my opinion, Mayberry makes Arkansas go. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I think Mayberry is a tremendous lead guard. I compare him and put him like an Isaiah Thomas, a scorer. The best pure point guard in the nation, I feel, is a kid by the name of Bob Hurley down at Duke. See? Caesars tied a career high with 21 points, and LSU leads it by 21 with just over three to go. The whistle inside, it's going to be on O'Neal, and that's his second. This team is so different than the team I saw earlier this year who got blasted by UNLV. Jerry Tarkanian's team really put the hurt on them, and then Arizona just took them apart from wire to wire. It was no contest. It was an m and -er. But all of a sudden, Dale Brown has changed some buttons, pushed a couple of buttons here and there. He's really added some things to the puzzle, and they've been a different basketball team. I want everybody to stay tuned for the uh, Budweiser postgame report will be coming up immediately following this game in Baton Rouge. Mashburn with a double-double, 19 points and 11 rebounds. I'm going to throw a little test out to all you basketball aficionados, and here it is right now. Name for me 11 coaches that have 20 years or more at the same school and have been at the same school. Dale Brown gave me that test yesterday, Roger, and tell him how I did. Come on, Roger. You did 9 out of 11. No, 10 out of 11. Okay, I'm sorry. I missed one. You missed one. I'll tell you the guy I missed. I'll, I'll give you one. I missed Carol Williams at Santa, Santa, Clara. Santa Clara. So let's play this game. You guys uh, think about it. I'll come back later and tell you who it is. Dick, you were talking about early in the year when Shaquille against Arizona and UNLV didn't really have such outstanding games. I mean, those were a couple of games that LSU lost. But, uh, you know, their schedule uh, might be, to some folks, uh, a bit sus suspect. And, uh, we're going to ask our Betty Crocker of uh, basketball analyst Dick Vitale here about the cupcake schedule. Does LSU have one? Look at those numbers there. We saw a 65-point, 73-point win, a 62-point win, a 31-point win. I disagree with that cupcake. I really do. Anytime you play in UNLV, you play in Arizona, you play in Louisville, you got Duke coming up, you play Texas, you're entitled to a few cupcakes. Dale is entitled to eat a cupcake now and then. <laughs> now, down at Georgetown, where they play nothing but cupcakes, that's a different story. You know, I understand when that team gave up 258 points as we watch the play inside. Loose ball here as Brown will have it stripped away. 
and the foul's going to be on Hanson. You know, when that team, DeVry Institute, gave up the 258 points, they tell me that John Thompson jumped on a phone, was trying to get him on the schedule, but he couldn't get through. The phone was busy because Billy Tubbs was trying to beat him to the punch. Oh, you're cruel. As Rick Pitino, I'll tell you one thing, he just despises losing. He absolutely just hates it. And I'll tell you one other thing. This guy will have this team rejuvenated. He's a great, he's a master at playing with the mind. As Brown will go to the line, it's a 20-point ball game. 69-49, 254. Okay, here to go and here's some of those 11 guys, Roger. Dean Smith. What about a guy named Dale Brown, Petey Carell, Don Haskins out of Texas El Paso. Had a tough week this week. Lost two games. This game is academic right about now. We're just playing out the string here. Norm Stewart is another one. Lou Karnasekka, congratulations to Louie in the Hall of Fame. Al McGuire. Hey, Al owes me something. He's in the Hall of Fame. You know why he owes me something? He got some of those W's against me. I was I a cupcake for him. And Connie Hawkins. Oh, yeah. The Hall of great fame. I think Connie. that's terrific. Also, Jack Ramsey getting in, and hey, Carol Williams is another one from Santa Clara. Denny Crum, Bobby Knight, you got Dale Brown, you got John Thompson, George Blaney, and George Blaney. Blaney. Shaquille O'Neal still in the game, Dick, with 2:54 to go, and it's a 19-point lead. Letting work on his free throw shooting a little bit. Oh, I'll tell you one thing: you Dale Brown with the three-point shot. You better believe he doesn't feel it's safe yet. 20 points for Shaquille. It's time to get the bus heated up for Lexington. It's this baby's in the book. 70-50, less than three to go. And LSU's one of those hot clubs that won now 10 out of 11 with this one. Catino never sits down. Well, they're gonna take it inside and O'Neal's gonna block it. I mean, he just owns He's the lane. Tw 20 points, 19 rebounds, six block shots. Is that incredible? And how many shots did he change? He changes their offense because they can't come inside. Exactly. I mean, you, before you go on the court, he changes your offense. And now he goes to the spread. They're looking for the dunk by Shaquille. Shaquille or Singleton break into the goal after dribble penetration. So here comes the dribble penetration. Going to use some clock, spread the court. Try to get help. There's the deflection from the back. And the jump ball, the arrow is going towards Kentucky. Had a chance to share some time with Hanson's mom and dad yesterday. His mom is from Spain, from out of Madrid, and his dad is over in his dual citizenship. The kid has citizenship in Spain as well as here in America. Started out at Tennessee Martin and scored transferred to LSU. Scored 41 here against, uh, against LSU as a freshman for Tennessee Martin. Well, the crowd's starting to leave right now as Mashburn knocks one down from the baseline. He's had a very productive day. One of the uh, few Kentucky players uh, to do that. It's 70-52 with less than two minutes to go. Mashburn with 21 points and the foul out on top. See what uh, is number 31, Dale Brown. Certain teams, when they spread the court, become very effective because of personnel. And Arkansas being one of those teams. In fact, Dale said the 43-point performance by Todd Day here against LSU was the best he's ever witnessed. There's Justin Anderson, the uh, transfer from Cal Irvine. Had a big first half with those 10 points. Well, I thought the big first half was dictated by three guys. Caesar and Anderson shooting well from the perimeter. And Singleton matching up on Nashburn defensively. Coming up, Kentucky at Auburn, then at home against Alabama, LSU at Florida, and then Duke here in the depth zone. I'll tell you that, that Florida game's a very dangerous game because if his kids are constantly talking Duke, they can get themselves in trouble down there in Gainesville. Tipped around by O'Neal. And with 125 to go, LSU leads it by 20, 72-52. And Dick, we go back to that statistic that we showed at the beginning of the half when Kentucky does not hit the three-pointer. They don't have much of a chance. Well, I told you, I felt, Roger, that they got to shoot about 40% from three-point range to have a chance today to go to the winner's circle because you can only anticipate that we'd get nothing on the interior. And Brown will leave the game, and Mashburn now has fouled out. 21 points, 11 rebounds. That man is a sophomore. And we say man because uh, that he is. Uh, he's going to be a terrific player for Rick Pitino in Kentucky. In high school, he was rated behind the Adrian Autrys, the Brian Reeses, 
Autry playing at Syracuse, Reese playing at uh, North Carolina, Phelps also playing at Carolina, Khalid Reeves over at Arizona. But right now, Mashburn to me has exceeded all four guys in terms of his productivity and what he has become as a player. John Piku has come into the game. And Caesar, what a big day for Clarence Caesar out of Iowa, Louisiana. I said to him, I said, hey, you think you can have a shot down at Fayetteville against Arkansas? He said, we can have a shot against anyone. 74-52. <laughs> just over a minute left to go, and Feldhaus just can't get it done from three-point land on this day, and he's had such great success the last couple of years against LSU. Steal there by Travis Ford. One thing about Kentucky, they won't get sloppy at the end of the game. They won't quit either. I'll tell you what, they'll play hard every possession. That reflects the personality of the guy on the sideline, Mr. Patino. Feldhaus takes it inside. Feldhaus had a tough day today being inserted in the starting lineup. This Kurt Hammock last year in the start against Mississippi State had 20 points and 10 rebounds when Shaquille was out with an injury. Dick, a little bit of trivia for you. You gave us one about coaches. Uh, uh -oh. What six teams have gone to the NCAA tournament eight years running? And I huh? know. You know what? LSU has to be one of them because Mr. Dale Brown. Well, let's, let's, take a, let's take a look at it. Well, I'll tell you who else. You ready for it? Oh, they're going to flash and make oh, it yeah. easy. Okay. Duke, Georgetown, LSU, North Carolina, Syracuse, UNLV will not make it nine in a row. Hey, here's a rumor for you. Tom Penders' agent has been down in Vegas. The same agent that represents Tom Penders of Texas represents Larry Brown, Mr. Glass. Wow, well, which one? And I'm going to tell you right now, Tom Penders possibly could be on their hit list. I don't think Larry Brown fits the kind of job description they're looking for. I think Larry would be a great coach in, in many of places because he's such an outstanding teacher. But down at UNLV, I think they want to go to 180 from the situation with Jerry Tarkanian's people that have been there. And remember this, Larry Brown came from the Kansas scene where they were placed on probation. So I think Tom Penders, And UCLA before that, in all honesty. Also, I really feel this way, Roger. Watch out for a guy right here in the Louisiana area by the name of Perry Clark. He is also doing a great job at Tulane. He's going to be on a lot of people's hit list. But I think Penders is a possibility. Hey, tell these guys they got Florida. Tell these guys they got Florida. If I were Dale Brown, I'd run in a crowd right now, and I'd rip up the sign. I'd rip it up. Don't get Duke mad now. You don't want to get Duke angry. Going to the line right now is David Messia. He's a freshman from uh, look at Lindbrook, yeah. New York. And Dale Brown keeps that motivational ability going. I told him yesterday, don't defend the fact that you're a motivator. I think sometimes he feels slighted that people don't give him enough credit for blending a team and getting a team to win. Motivation is a very key part of the element of the coaching package. Well, you saw the three-pointer put up by Travis Ford. Kentucky, eight of 43 on the day. That's the most three-point shots they've attempted this year. And that's probably going to be close to one of their worst shooting days for three-pointers. Yeah, you got to have better balance than that. This is Piku, he's a sophomore from Mobile behind the back. Oh, Boudreaux was there. Surprise. Well, Dick, coming into this game today, uh, we have a team from the East Division, a team from the West Division of the Southeastern Conference. They're only meeting in the regular season. They want a rematch. They're going to have to wait for the tournament or postseason play. Dale Brown would like to put them on a schedule and play them twice. He said, we'd like to play every year. One year maybe at Madison Square Garden, then at the Superdome, maybe at Houston. 74-53. And that's the story of the day. The three-pointer just will not go for Kentucky. Roger, it's been certainly a pleasure, but as you simply said, live by the three, die by the three, and Shaquille O'Neal on the interior, just a dominant player, and as I said earlier, he's one of the four best centers in the world, and I'm talking Mr. Ewing, Olajuwon, David Robinson, and Shaquille O'Neal, and yes, my friends, I firmly believe he will be back in a uniform out at LSU for his senior year. 20 points, 20 rebounds, six blocks. Yes, indeed, he is the real deal. He is magnificent. He is absolutely magnificent, baby, with a capital M. Final score here, LSU 74, Kentucky 53 from the Pete Maravich Assembly Center in Baton Rouge on the campus of LSU, and we'll be right back.